Hello internet and what's going on? Welcome back to that strange old place, the network of notoriety, Top 10 Nerd. The only place on the internet that you can find a pseudo 66 point list on Spider-Man's enemies. Well, probably not, but PT just can't catch a break. Today I'll be your spirit guide Jack Finch as we slap up a web and take in the view and fittingly ask the question, who are the Sinister Six? Roll the clip. My new associates. Look who's here. In short, the answer to this question is relatively straightforward. The Sinister Six are a posse of supervillains who perpetually pose a threat to Peter Parker. In one form or another, it almost always features Dr. Octopus or the Green Goblin and is comprised of Spider-Man's most threateningly relevant enemies. It's a narrative device that's worked incredibly well throughout the Spider-Man franchise and has seen incarnations from a vastly different number of bad guys throughout the Marvel Universe. That's where it gets complicated and for us to say that there's one straight up group of the Sinister Six is a bit of a cop out. Before we get into that though, if you're a fan of this video or just top 10 nerd in general, go ahead and hit that subscribe bell so you can get a convenient notification every time something like this crops up. Also, if you want to go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, I won't hold it against you. So why do we care about the Sinister Six, if at all? Well, it's because of two things. In the mid credit scene of Spider-Man Homecoming, Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, after his heartbreaking story arc plays out, ends up incarcerated in prison. Did anyone else feel that the Vulture was 100% vindicated? Anyway, he meets Matt Gargan, aka Scorpion, who tells him that he's got some boys on the outside who are planning a little revenge party for old Spidey, leaving things in an excitedly precarious position for Tom Holland's Spider-Man and his future franchise storylines. Our second point, while minor, also makes things relevant. During the Sony Pictures hack of 2014, a crucial email chain from executive producer Amy Pascal revealed that Tom Holland's Spider-Man was very much intended to appear in a Sinister Six scenario, and it looks like things are picking up steam with Spider-Man Far From Home scheduled to be released on July 5th, 2019. Who the hell are these guys anyway? Well, the Sinister Six were created by Stan Lee himself way back when in 19. 64. After suffering three miserable defeats in a row at the hands of Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus ends up separated from his tentacle pack and winds up in prison. Well, the tentacle pack ends up saving the day and breaking him out of prison, and he's so utterly pissed off that he rounds up every villain that's ever crossed paths with Spider-Man, which in the Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 turns out to be Vulture, Electro, Craven the Hunter, the original Mysterio, and William Baker, aka Flint Marco, aka Sandman. Strangely enough, though, in the original Sinister Six, the notorious group of baddies don't get off on the best foot and end up arguing over who'll have the grand honour of killing Spider-Man once and for all. They come up with the brainwave that they'll fight him individually, all's fair in villainy and war, which perplexed PT at the time. Why didn't they just band together and pound him into the ground six on one? Easy life, right? That kind of lack of crucial critical thinking essentially plagues the Sinister Six throughout the rest of their villainous career. We see them next in Return of the Sinister Six, running between issues 334 and 339 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Same lineup essentially, except Craven the Hunter's dead, and this time we get the demonically infused Hobgoblin to stir things up a bit. Doc Ock betrays everyone, revealing his grand scheme to take over the world, and Sandman turns out to be a good guy great stuff. Then we have Revenge of the Sinister Six. Electro, Mysterio, Vulture, Sandman and Hobgoblin team up to take revenge on Dr. Octopus after his shenanigans. They also recruit Gog, the interdimensionally teleporting super monster, you know, to round it up to six. Doesn't end up too well for the team and the majority end up whacked in jail. You'll sense a bit of a theme here. After that, they figure six just isn't enough to take on spider people, this time with Hobgoblin at the helm. The group consists of Beetle, Electro, Mysterio, Scorpio, Shocker and Vulture. Overkill? Yeah, it doesn't work this time either. Things start getting out of hand a little after that. Sandman switches back to a life of villainy. Mysterio commits suicide at the hands of a daredevil defeat, and we conveniently get a brand new guy. Venom joins the party, and Craven the Hunter returns as the newly founded Alyosha Kravenoff. Then things get really out of hand in 2004 Marvel Knight Spider Man, when we step it up to the Sinister 12, led by Mac Gargan, aka Scorpion, and he throws pretty much everything but the kitchen sink to finally get revenge. Vulture, Sandman, Electro, the Chameleon, the Lizard, Hydro Man, the Shocker, Hammerhead, Boomerang, Tombstone, Green Goblin. 
you get the picture. This was peak 90s. They didn't even have a lot to go off. If you think that's ridiculous, then don't hold your breath because in 2015, Spider-Man and the X-Men, issue number three, Spider-Man and his X-Men students get a prime time pounding by Mojo and Chameleon, who managed to rack up a staggering sinister 66, pitting them against the likes of Electro, Jackal, Carnage, Beetle, Demogoblin, Grizzly, Mysterio, Rhino, Tombstone, Sandman, Scorpion, Shocker, Shriek, Craven the Hunter, Puma, Rhino, Ringer, Morbius the Living Vampire, Doctor Octopus, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Hammerhead, Jack O' Lantern, Kingpin, and Lizard. Yeah, that's not even 66. There's such a crammed full cast of villains that we don't even get to see them in their entirety inked in the storyline. Thankfully though, we're figuring that the Marvel Cinematic Universe version is going to be a little bit more streamlined to say the least. It's also going to be the first ever time that the group of villains have appeared in a live action Spider-Man film after failing to get clinched during Andrew Garfield's shot at the web slinging title. So what do we know about the 2019 cinematic version of Spider-Man Sinister Six? Well there's already quite a few clear cast members. Michael Keaton is set to reprise his role as Vulture with Michael Mando taking up the mantle of Scorpion as his jail cell buddy. We've already seen Shocker played by Bokeem Woodbine in Spider-Man homecoming, albeit for a brief instance. Maybe it's just a random cameo, but our bet's on him returning in Far From Home. One big name is already joining the sinister cast, with Jake Gyllenhaal confirmed to be picking up the plexiglass fishbowl as Quinton Beck, aka Mysterio, who, if Gyllenhaal's acting career is anything to go by, will add a depth of complexity that has complemented the franchise excellently well so far. We know that Donald Glover made a brief appearance as Prowler in Homecoming, so perhaps the seeds were sown for him to appear as a reluctant member of the Sinister Six. So who else is there? Who would be the perfect casting to complete the Sinister Six setup? Tom Hardy has already taken up the symbiote reins of Venom. Perhaps he'll work his way into the MCU via Scorpion and Vulture's gang. Well, why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. It's been a lengthy one, I can tell you that. The Sinister Six is definitely more than the sum of its parts. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with your nearest and dearest. As per usual, you've been watching Top 10 Nerd. I've been your host, Jack Finch, and until next time, you take it easy.